The keys I'm using are in the bottom right corner of the viewport. We'll be using the default cube to form our procedural low poly rock. Move the cube so it's on top of the 3D cursor. And set the origin to the 3D cursor. This will help if you export it out to a game engine. Scale the cube to the size of the wall you desire. and apply the scale. Shade the wall smooth and turn on Auto Smooth. Add loop cuts toward the edges of the wall to provide structural support. We will be using the automatic UV provided by Blender since this is just a cube. This will be our low poly base. Duplicate the wall for our high poly mesh. Then add a subdivision surface modifier. Increase the levels and apply the modifier. Add a displace modifier. This will help us make the larger stones with the help of a texture. Add a texture to the modifier. Under the texture tab, Choose Musgrave for the type. For the noise basis, use Voronoi F2 to F1. This refers to the distance to the closest and to the second closest feature point position and color. Change the size to a larger number to make the cells larger on the mesh. Under the Colors panel, activate the color ramp. Add a third color stop and move it toward the black color stop. This will help change the depth of the stones. Click on the color and change the value to a larger number to square off the stone edges. Change the interpolation from linear to ease, again changing the stone edges. Back on the modifier, change the mid-level to zero, which will result in no displacement and also change the strength. Add a smooth bonifier and change the repeat to a higher number. This is the number of smooth iterations. Add a bevel modifier with a width type of percent.
This determines the size of the bevel and the minimum angle that will be beveled. Change the width per set and the angle number. Under the geometry panel, deactivate clamp overlap, since we're not worried about overlapping intersections of geometry. Also add a triangulate modifier, which will convert the quads into triangles. Then apply all the modifiers. Also add a triangulate modifier to the low poly mesh. I'll be using X normal to make my normal map. The link is in the description. Export the low poly and high poly meshes separately as OBJ. Import the high poly and low poly meshes into X normal. Open up the tools panel and select the ray distance calculator. After you run the calculator, copy the results. Under the Baking Options panel, choose to render a normal map and an AO map. Choose where you want the output file to save to and choose the resolution. Then click on Generate Maps. In Blender, hide the high poly mesh and add a normal map node to the material. Connect the normal map node to the normal input of the principal shader and open the UV map. Drag in the normal map you baked and change the color space to non-color. Connect the image texture to the normal map node. When I change to material preview, I can now see the normal map affecting my low poly mesh. You can change the strength of the normal map as needed. Change the roughness to 1, and change the base color to a blue-gray. Drag in the AO map and change the color space to non-color. Add an ambient occlusion node. and connect the AO map to the node. Add a mix shader between the principal shader and the material output. Connect the AO output of the ambient occlusion node to the mix shader and change the factor. If you're going to export this out to a game engine, make sure the wall is sitting on top of the 3D cursor. Once it's in place, set the origin to the 3D cursor.